because I would like now to invite up the first speaker, uh, who is Marku Rumukainen. And uh, Marku will focus on the scope and process behind the 1.5 degree report. Uh, Marku is professor of climatology at Lund University and also a member of the recently established Swedish Climate Policy Council, which is tasked to evaluate the government's uh, climate policy and whether it's in line with our climate targets. Uh, and furthermore, you are national IPCC focal point at its SMHI, the Swedish Meteorological Hydrological Institute, and thereby you have a very good knowledge of the report and how it came about. So, Marcos, please take the floor. Thank you. The report came from somewhere and it's going somewhere, and in between it's making waves in, in different contexts that uh, authorities, governments, international organizations, NGOs, you people, we people. And I'm just going to, with a few words, try to provide the background and then you get to the exciting stuff of what the report actually says. The um, background is that in Paris, December 2015, where the countries of the world came up with a new global temperature goal, other things, the Paris Agreement. There also was a discussion on whether well below 2 degrees centigrade was a good enough goal. Many countries did not think so. The small island states, for example, least developed countries, but also other countries, and they call for 1.5, that the global warming should be stopped before reaching or at 1.5 degrees about the pre-industrial level. But it's also clear that there was fairly little science on 1.5 at that time, so nobody was or the countries as a whole were not prepared to take that step. Rather, they asked the IPCC whether the IPCC could do an assessment on the available science on 1.5 and what is relevant for 1.5. The request was well received by the IPCC. They said in 2016, yes, we'll do the report. And in addition to 1.5, we also look at the connection to sustainable development, poverty reduction, and, and so on in the report which is, of course, now in the contents uh, as well. The um, report has been done according to the IPCC guidelines. The process has been followed, even though it was produced in a short time compared to previous reports in less than two years. The um, re report in numbers, 91 lead authors, and, uh, lead authors from 40 countries, an additional 100 plus contributing authors. Uh, there were who went through 6,000 scientific studies, got further assistance from more than 1,000 expert reviewers who looked at the successive drafts of the report, and the expert reviewers who provided in total 42,001 comments, which the authors sort of processed, took into account, and which are reflected in the quality of the, of the final report. The report looks pretty much on four main things. It looks at mitigation pathways or emission pathways or development pathways, how the world could develop in different terms which would lead into emissions going down fast enough for the world to stay at 1.5 or below 1.5. But the report also looks at impacts on human systems, natural systems. The report looks like looks at how the global response, the global climate action, mitigation adaptation, how could the ambition level be um, even higher, how could it be speeded up? And as mentioned, the report looks into the connections between climate change, sustainable development, poverty reduction, eradication and reducing inequalities. The um, sort of three things from the report. The first one is that we are getting awfully close to 1.5 degrees centigrade. We are at one now and we are, we are almost there. The second one is that, well, there are re impacts of climate change. There will be more at 1.5, there will be more at 2 degrees, and they will rise even further. And the third one, of course, is that time is running out if we were to act on the 1.5 degree goal and more about this coming very, very soon. Finally, well, again, in Paris, 
in the Paris Agreement, the country decided that in 2018 we'll have something that was called at the time the Facilitative Dialogue. The first time since Paris that the countries would get together, look at where we are, the world in mitigation, where the emissions are going, uh, what the ambition levels, if they could be higher. Uh, and for this, the meaning is that the special report on 1.5 degree global warming will provide the scientific backdrop, the scientific starting point on basing the discussions, the political discussions. And it's really interesting to see how the world decides to act in Katowice in just a few weeks' time and what comes then. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, Marco. Uh, before we let the next person up on stage, uh, I just want to ask you one question. And as some of you perhaps may have read or, or heard, um, President Trump said that uh, it was a clear sign that the IPCC had a political agenda, which is perhaps not very surprising coming from him. But apart from Mr. Uh, President, Tr Bo uh, President Trump, what would you say public reactions so far have been to the report? Mixed, um, in the sense that I've heard the report both being called alarmistic or being, well, alarm report, being balanced, but also being conservative. So it really depends on where one is going. What I understand, the authors are happy with the report. They see that the science has been displayed in a correct way, so that the contents actually inform us about what we know, how well we know it, uh, where there are knowledge is, and so on. So it's a bit mixed, uh, sort of something for everyone. But the overall, I think the, the, the point of gravity is, is that it's a good product that we can use in the continued work. Okay. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you.